All right, so I guess we're ready, so we're gonna do this thing. Uh, it's kind of funny because there's not as many people here as usual. Somebody came in, they said, what are you doing? I said part three. They're like, all right, all right I can't follow the plot. They're out. <laughs> so <laughs> next week, yeah, we'll do something a little different. We won't do like a three-part series. We'll just do one opening or something. I do want to read one funny comment, though, that I, I got on one of these videos. Uh, Paul Smith, who said, your title writer deserves a raise. So uh, that's Ben Simon over there pumping his fist. Uh, he came up with the, the title. This is The Modern Benoni is No Baloney, Part 3. And John Boyer disagrees with that statement, so he's not here watching this. Uh, okay, but we continue. And this is, you know, uh, an opening where the first week, I guess we went over the Taimanov attack with, you know, E4 and F4, and I attack you and try to crush you immediately. Then we went over the modern main line, which, you know, has E4 and Knight F3. Today we're going to look at lines with, uh, where they withhold E4 for like a while. Uh, we'll flip the board and look at it from Black's point of view for some reason. And we'll continue. So in this line, we're actually going to come to the position in a, a slightly unusual way. But the normal way of, of reaching it, I'm going to have to go back or the computer's going to get mad at me. Uh, the normal way of reaching this position is by striking at the center, and we're looking at lines with e6, not b5. So here we get the Benoni. And tonight, in this position that we've seen several times now, we're going to look at the move knight to f3. And, you know, not playing e4 immediately. But I'm going to go back just for a second, because otherwise chess base gets mad at me. Uh, we'll reach the same position via a slightly different move order. Okay. So this is where we start today. And when you, you know, don't play e4 immediately, white's either going to have a plan with the fianchetto, which will be what we're going to look mostly at today, and we're also going to have a look at the knight's tour, where the knight makes an immediate jump all the way over to c4, often in conjunction with bishop to f4, attacking d6, and trying to cause black some annoyances right from the start. All right. So... Uh, First, we'll, we'll go over the main move. So we realize that this bishop belongs on the long diagonal here. And uh, we're going to focus mostly on g3, but let's go ahead and let's have a look at the knight's tour. And we've seen this maneuver before where the knight goes to c4. That's very typical in these lines. So you might be wondering, what if they just do it right away? And if you know, you're new to this opening, perhaps it's unusual. You move your knight three times right at, right at the beginning. But it's, you know, a very sophisticated opening where such maneuvers are definitely possible. And we'll look at how black should handle this. Okay, we were going to Fianchetto. And we're going to look mostly at knight to c4. But it is worth mentioning that if they play e4, they've sort of transposed to some of the main lines that we've already looked at. Um, you know, they've avoided a couple move orders, but... Basically, you know, you can castle and just get sort of a normal position. And we're going to see Black does his typical maneuvers. Uh, he puts all of his pieces here. You know, he's trying to play b5. He's trying to take control over e5 so that white doesn't play e5. He's trying to put this move on the board. So we'll see these typical maneuvers. And, okay, if, if here you get sort of a normal position, uh, if here you get sort of this typical sort of structure where white's trying to play for e5, black's going to eventually try to play b5 and get queenside play. But since the focus of the lecture is uh, on what happens when they withhold e4, we'll take a look at the knight's tour. Okay, so we castle. And they attack our d-pawn for a second time. And the main move here is to protect your pawn, which is generally a good idea. But we will come back to this position and we'll look at some crazy ways that you can try to sacrifice your d-pawn. And then Darian will sit there and shake his head and yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> so, okay, this is the main move and it's worth just seeing what the main plan is for both sides. So queen d2, which actually is an interesting move. Now sometimes in these types of positions, and we'll see a little bit of this, Black is thinking about playing the crazy looking g5. And you know, if you go back, here I come and I'm gonna go trap you. So this sort of crazy g5 stuff is gonna happen a lot in this lecture because we've seen a little bit, but we'll see it a little bit more tonight. That is a, a typical idea that black does have. So queen d2, you know, prevents g5. 
gets control of some more dark squares. Uh, OK, now b6 is the main move. Though there's also this interesting version that Korchnoi played, which looks very strange. You get rid of your bishop. But as we've kind of seen in the Benoni, you often give away your dark squared bishop for a knight. And it's strange because if you play the dragon or you play the Grunfeld, you never want to like give up that bishop. It's the greatest piece ever. But in the Benoni, very often you do just give it up. So of course, I played this, and he won a very complicated game that you know we could equally look at, and it would be equally instructive. But the main move here is b6. And after e3, and also interesting to note too, in these positions, White has to be careful with his e pawn. You know, a lot of the times e4 seems to be like, you know, isn't that what you want to play? Don't you want to play e4? But you do have to make sure that if black plays f5, that he's not getting a lot of counterplay. So if you play e4, they can play f5. And if you're not ready to play e5 yourself, then very often black can get counterplay, either because you have to take or they can take on e4. So white always wants to be really careful. So in this version, OK, you just get the modest center. We're going to develop castle. And then we're going to take more action in the center. And as we've seen before, this bishop a6 move, which does intend to just take the knight, because the knight is such a strong piece, and the bishop on c8 often doesn't have a really good job. Um, so after a move like a4, also black was hinting that perhaps he was going to be able to play b5, which is always what he wants to do on the queen side. So a4 prevents that. And f5 is a very reasonable move here. It prevents the knight from going to e4. But the main move is just to take. And you get a, a position like this, and we'll just go a few more moves. Um, and reach this position with typical play. So white's eventually going to try to arrange for all the standard stuff that we've, we've seen. And black's trying to go on the queen side. But I do want to return to this position and have a little bit of fun. Because it's funny, the computer move is a move that like nobody plays. So here, so I had a little bit of fun looking at that. But I will look at a move that other humans have played which is this sort of crazy looking move, knight to a6, just ignoring that the d-pawn is attacked twice. And obviously, if black can play like this, or if he can put his knight here, and neither of the captures work on d6, then he should probably play this way. So we'll, we'll have a little fun. We'll see what happens. Uh, the best move here is probably e3, so we'll come back to this. But let's, let's take. Uh, how do you guys want to take first, with a bishop or a knight? Nobody knows. All right, nobody knows, so I'll take with the bishop first. <laughs> All right, we take with the bishop, because it, it's shorter. Then we'll get to have a lot more fun taking with the knight. All right, you attacked my rook. You won a pawn. All very good. So I play rook e8. And the move that everybody's played in this position is bishop g3. And white's like, yes, you know, robbed a pawn, got away with the crime. I fled the scene. But now, white actually gets, or I'm sorry, black gets a really good position after the, just the simple move, knight to b4. And either you're getting this pawn back with one of your pieces, or you're playing this move, which would let your knight go here and lead to you know, a very powerful position. So the computer wants you just to play e3 and give the pawn back. So nothing special. And perhaps black is even a little bit better in such a line. Uh, so we'll go back here, and we'll have a little bit more fun with the knight takes. This is much more interesting. And what's kind of cool about this is black actually can make several forcing aggressive moves to really keep the initiative and achieve an advantage. And the first move, uh, you can pause your videos at home every move here if you want to try to figure it out for yourself, is just this simple looking move, knight to h5. A very common square for the knight in these variations. And I simply intend to take your bishop and then, you, you know, remove the defender of your knight. And it is worth noting what's kind of funny if they take here, which is a mistake. You just take the bishop and the knight's trapped. So that, that's kind of funny. Are, are you amused? OK, good. Um, queen d2 is, is much better because, OK, if you take the bishop, I'm going to take back with my queen. My knight's still protected. Um, OK, I go here. All 
And what's the threat now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, knight takes bishop, and when the queen takes back, you can go to c2. So that's the threat. So let's say we protect that. Okay, seems sensible. Now I can just take this. And in such a position, I can even play here. Now what's the threat? Yeah, so we're threatening here. We're also threatening here. We got a lot of threats this time. So, okay, now he can take, attacking the queen. Take the knight, take the knight. okay. Uh, and you get a position like this where, yeah, you're still up a pawn. I can always, you know, win it back, and then I can take this guy. So, I mean, black it really has a serious initiative here just for, for a little pawn. Uh, and yeah, we do have this threat still in the position. So this actually would be a lot of fun for Black, who has at least, at least getting his pawn back, but he's just much better developed and White still has to prove that he can castle in this position. So, okay, all in all, a lot of fun for, for Black. So we'll return to this position after knight a6. And again, if they can't take on d6, then you should play this way. <laughs> um, but if e3, now we can go back and we'll get a similar version as the main line. Only the difference is instead of queen d2, they've played e3. And we'll, we'll see why this makes a difference. Because it's such a variation, you can play sort of the aggressive plan mentioned earlier, g5, with the idea f5. And you're threatening to win the bishop. So white would have to play something, you know, like f4. And you can either play g4, or you can just play like knight, one of your knights to c7. You know, you could just go back. Uh, and Okay, it's a sort of dynamic play that Black is playing for. When you play the Benoni, this is sort of the crazy position that you want. Um, and I don't, I don't know, I assume it's, it's equal, but it's very dynamic. So there's a lot of chances to play for a win for both sides in such a crazy position. Uh, but yeah, so okay, so that's the knight tour variation. That's what happens when they, you know, immediately go to c4 with the knight. But now let's, let's focus here on the Fianchetto variation which is actually very theoretical. So it is, you know, it's quite difficult if you don't know what you're doing. And I used to play this way all the time with white and I really liked it. And everybody, every time I'd play it, and I had great success with it. It's just one of those openings where I just had good success. So I kept doing it. Everybody would always say after the games, like in the postmortem, you know, this is terrible. You shouldn't play this way as white. That's no way to get an advantage, which is probably true, but I kept winning. So I kept playing it. Uh, and I beat some relatively high-rated players with this as white. And I think it's just because both sides need to know a lot of theory. But now Boris Averick wrote a book about this position as white. So now everybody thinks it's cool. So now I don't play it. I only play it when they don't think it's cool. Um, OK, and we're just going to develop our bishops in this both castle. So here we get sort of the starting position. And for black, there's two main moves here. Uh, they almost always lead to the, the same thing. The main move is rook e8, which I think is more accurate than a6, just because you are thinking sometimes about playing this immediate knight to e4, which can often lead at least to equality. But a6 is likely to transpose to what we're about to see, so we'll go through it real quick. After a6, white almost automatically plays a4, preventing b5. And now, after the normal moves, right, white goes on with his normal plan, Black goes on with his normal plan, which are to play all of these moves. Uh, you'll get a position that's, that's very similar to what we're going to see. Uh, H3 is sort of an important move. It's sort of like in the Banco Gambit, which is a cousin of the Benoni that we're looking at now. Black very often has this idea in mind of rerouting the knight to e5. So H3, a good little waiting move. And we're going to see positions much like this as we go along here. So we're, we'll return to the main move. Um, sorry. In this position, let's just focus here on, on rook to e8. And we're actually going to look at three moves in this position. So we'll watch three different games. Uh, the first game, we're going to look at the move rook to e1, just putting the rook behind the e-pawn, and then you'll play e4. We'll also look at the second most common move, and a, a move I've, I've seen before. I've, I've been on both sides of this. 
So we'll look at, at this move, which makes a lot of sense, just targeting the D pawn. And we'll look at the main move, which is knight to D2, just maneuvering the knight to C4. OK. In this first game with rook to E1 was played in the US Championship. So I always love to show games that were played here. And this is the game between Caden Trough, uh, who was 16 at the time. He's at the club you know, occasionally throughout the year. so. Very nice guy, and he's playing Hikaru Nakamura, who became the US champion that year. So I wonder who won. Um, and OK, it was a very interesting game. So rookie one, not very common, but I do just kind of like how black played in this game. And you get sort of typical ideas that are worth looking at. OK, he played a6, right? Very typical. And so obviously, a4. He goes here. OK, he's just doing all the usual stuff. And Caden pushed. And so now we were sort of entering the middle game planning where black has to start thinking about what he's going to do. So maybe he just played sort of the natural moves. He got to this position. But now what do you do as black? And as we kind of mentioned, similar to the Banco Gambit, he went to g4. So we will see this maneuver where the knight maneuvers back to e5. Um, OK, he's, he sees that. And he goes here. Revealing an attack on the knight. So the knight moves. And the first thing you might think when you see this position is, well, has he just blundered? I mean, don't you just play f4 here? Well, no, because then I just jump in to d3, which often happens. And, you know, I've seen like Banco Gambit games have just gone terribly wrong when black gets his pawn on c4 and one knight goes in here and the other knight goes here and you just get crushed on the light squares immediately. So these sorts of things are, are in the position, but right now white has to worry about d3. So, okay, he plays this move. And now I'm threatening f4. So, okay, I, I guess there's more than one move you can play here. There's, there's lots of things that you can actually do. But facing the threat of f4, I guess, how would you guys react to this position? What would you guys play? G5. Yeah, g5. And that's what he played. Now, obviously, this weakens a lot of light squares. For example, if a knight could land on f5, white would be really happy. You know, the queen might go to h5, which would be very good. But with your bishop on f1, you have made it sort of difficult for this guy to travel to f5. Also, this guy has a, another tricky journey because you know he has to use the square the queen's on. So you have a little bit of time before white's ever able to get a knight to f5. But if under normal circumstances one of these knights just plonk right there, then you might be in trouble. So we'll see. Can you get away with such a move? And typically these are the dynamic moves that you're looking for when you play this opening. Okay. So Caden played h3, just controlling g4. Queen f6. Uh, so yeah, I would like you to move this knight away, and then I'll go here. Check. OK, and white went in here, which I think Caden, after the game, said he didn't really like. Um, but I don't know. It's OK. It's a good move. Because will his queen actually end up getting trapped there? Can black rearrange his pieces? And this is sort of interesting. One point of it, too, you get your queen to a nice aggressive square, and now the knight is going to go to f5. So here's an interesting planning exercise, and you may want to pause your video. And again, there's multiple right moves here. There's not like one right plan or anything. But uh, his plan that, that Nakamura came up with was, is really interesting. So I think we should just spend a little bit of time here just thinking about this position. And I just wonder what you guys would play. I like that one guy in the audience is like, oh, and everybody else is like, I don't know, it's too hard. <laughs> Looking at the floor. I'm thinking about in the game, he chose the very interesting move, bishop to h6. And his idea is whenever the knight gets here, or sorry, when the knight goes to here, he's going to be ready and just take it. So we'll see again in the Benoni, you give away your dark squared bishop for a knight. And you weaken all the dark squares, and then it's dynamic and crazy. Three months after this game, Ding Lorin had this position. And his black, he played the move h6. Uh, so I assume this was an attempt at an improvement. I don't know that it's really any better than what Nakamura played. But uh, his treatment of this position 
was very similar to yours. He got the knight out of the way, just so that if the knight ever goes here, we can grab it. So this, you know, equally valid. But more unusual and entertaining is bishop to h6. OK, so here goes the knight. Next, we're going to e3, so g4. And if the knight goes to e3, which it did, he intended to take it. And OK, so will you get enough counterplay? I mean, you did give away a dark squared bishop, and you've, you've moved some pawns in front of your king. But if you just look at the coordination of the white pieces, you know, you realize, you know, are you good out here or are you going to get trapped? Um, you know, how are you going to develop some of these pieces? Even this guy, I don't think any of his pieces really look truly brilliant in this position. So, I mean, what's going on? And sometimes when you're a kid, even when you're a grandmaster, you play Nakamura, all your pieces are <laughs> kind of all over the place. That, that just happens. Um, he went here, which has a big threat, and the queen will be trapped. For example, Danny, what, what, what bad move can I play here as white? Can I play bishop g2 and then h4? What, you want to play h4 and then get trapped? But then you don't have the h4 in some lines. OK. a5, OK, that's a good bad move. I like your bad move better. OK. So here the queen is getting trapped. Uh, so we go here. But h4, you, you're trying to trap her even earlier. But I wanted to go to that square. Yeah, <laughs> and OK, after here, you can go, aha. Yep, you haven't got me yet. Whoops. And OK, now where are you going? So the, there is a threat here. The queen is getting trapped. So let's not play that move. OK, so he took. Right, very good. Now the queen can escape. And here Nakamura played a move that he didn't really like after the game, because it's not the most accurate move. Uh, he took on g4, so we'll come back. But stronger is first playing this move knight to f6. And so sort of the point is, after your queen retreats, and it's kind of funny, you have to go to like h1 or something, we can take here. And after some rook move, we get a lot of counterplay with the move f5. And there's still, you know, some the game is probably balanced, but it's a dynamic, sharp equality that is, is really difficult to play. And black is, is trying to get as much counterplay as possible to justify having an attack because he gave away you know, lots, of, lots of squares. And white's going to play sort of a lot of defense in this variation. And if he can consolidate, he's got the more solid pawn structure and safer king. But OK, takes. And now Caden went here which is wrong. b3 is a better square, but also very important would have been this move. So this, after this, uh, white should be a little bit better. And the point is we're protecting f2. And why is that important? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll see why protecting f2 was, was sort of necessary. But in the game, this is where he decided to go. Now after you attack the queen, it went all the way back to h1. OK, so here in come the pieces. Right, we got to stay active. You know, maybe I can get all my pieces over here and go do stuff. You know, maybe I can do something. You know, I can just bring my rook over, gain another tempo on the queen. Maybe this queen is going here. Maybe I get some pressure here. OK, black's got to be active. Queen f3. And then Nakamura went here. And then in the press conference, he's like, I'm a moron. Why did I play that move? But OK, it's fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I guess he was worried about this move. But I mean, black can just like continue developing, sort of like he did in the game, and be fine. You can give up the b-pawn. Uh, he does have an attack. And we'll see it. But in the game, uh, Caden went queen to d3. So he's doing a lot of queen moves. And this was one queen move too many. This is actually the losing move. So OK, I, I'll question the audience. I mean. How are you going to continue the attack here? See if we can, you can play sharp chess like Nakamura. Here. And the first move isn't the hard move to find. Queen h6. OK, very serious threat. <laughs> the threat is checkmate. So OK, he defended. And yeah, if your rook, you want to have your queen here instead of your rook, because then you can go to h2 and it's check. 
so how would you guys continue now? In the game, he didn't do that. He went in with a check. OK, now, now the more difficult move to find. And he played this, like, immediately. <laughs> you know, he starts, like, sacking all of his stuff, and, but he's like, uh, he just did it immediately, too. C2. C2? Uh, do you mean here? Yeah. You're correct. Wow, very good. All right, so here, and what was the point of this, this knight sack? Well, now we get this, this big bishop move, again, with a big threat. OK, it's starting to come together. OK, queen goes back. And uh, OK, there's a brilliant move here. So continue. And OK, I think somebody mentioned here that now white is actually winning if he plays like a computer for 20 more moves. So we'll show this variation just for a laugh, and then we'll go on and we'll find the actual right move that was played in the game. Here, just king f3, no big deal. Darien's king you're on, is on f3 every game you've ever played, or never. Uh, OK, and you can take. And you don't really want to trade queens. You're down some, some material. But you have this move, queen h5. And it looks really scary, because you have some discovery, maybe. My king can barely move out of the discovery. But it's, it's no big deal. You got nothing. And you really don't have a good discovery. And you, OK, if you go here with the point that if you take, you lose your queen. OK, I just play here. No big deal. You got nothing. You have no good discoveries. For example, you can just play here. And then if we trade queens, then things are good for me. You can go here. OK, no big deal. And then we trade the queens, and white will win. So that's with perfect play. It's actually white that would be able to turn the tables on black. But uh, I don't know how much of that he calculated, because he just played instantly, which makes me think he just saw the right move here. <laughs> uh, and the incredible move that, that was played in the game, rook take g4. Very powerful move. Takes, takes. King has to move. Um, not king f3, because you can even play here. This is very strong for black. So he went to e3. And he's you know in a little bit of danger. <laughs> Took here, just OK. And, uh, and then the game wrapped up pretty shortly. He picks up some more material. Check, and you can go to h8, and we can repeat a little bit. We can go back and forth. But he decided to win, which was a good idea, I guess. And after here, here, the king had to walk back. And after this, he has to go to f1, and then his mate in one. So he resigned in this position instead of getting checkmated. So you know, a very powerful example by Black. Nakamura is always you know, in, a, in a fighting mood. And this is sort of the trouble you have when you're the higher rated opponent. You know, even when you're in the US championship and you're playing grandmasters, you know, 2500s, but you're 27, 2800. You know, you have to play stuff like the Benoni. So it's a great opening if you end up playing lots of lower rated opponents because it, it's sharp and imbalanced. And you can play for a win even with black, even if you're playing grandmasters. So OK, excellent, powerful attacking chess by Nakamura. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll have a look at another game here. All right, this game is a little bit shorter. This is the game between Vasily Ivanchuk and Anish Giri. But this was a rapid game. So it's game in 45, AKA Lulu's favorite time control. Uh, I just played a game with, a rated game with Lulu yesterday. So expect to see that on, on one of these Saturdays pretty soon. It was game in 45, that's what she likes. So, okay, fine. Um, okay, let's get to the position here. And in this position, it's actually reached via a Catalan opening. OK, so we, we get to our position in a slightly unusual way. And we have, again, the Fianchetto variation with the move rook to e8. OK, we're going to look at the second most popular move here, which is bishop to f4. And it's a move, I, again, I've, I've played this as both sides, so it's, it's very interesting. And there's a lot of ideas for black here. There's actually a lot of room to, to be creative. 
uh, in the game, knight to a6. So again, we see this knight to a6 idea, you know, where you're either going to b4 or you're going to c7. The main move is a6, and okay, automatically a4. And you can attack the bishop, it moves away. You can get something like this. This is typical where, you know, I'm, again, I'm trying to play on the queen's side. He's going to start pushing in the center. You get sort of typical play for this variation. But again, also possible after bishop to f4 is this idea of trading knights, which often implies that you're going to sacrifice an exchange. Because when they take here, uh, you know, they normally will go back. They're attacking the rook in a couple different ways. And okay. And black is, is seriously thinking about taking the bishop. Now taking the bishop immediately is the main line. I was playing a blitz game in one of the Saturday night blitzes against opponent rated about 2400. And in this position, he played the move rook to b4, which I actually didn't know at the time. So I was happy when I looked it up later that I played the right move a3. <laughs> I didn't know, you know, it's a five minute game. I didn't really know, but all right, I played it correctly. And he took, and now after he takes here, I can put my rook on a2 and he went back. And I was actually much better for like the whole game. And then I, you know, I, I blundered into a drawn position in time trouble, but a very, you know, interesting way to play. But more common in this position is just to take immediately. Uh, and okay, you reach sort of a similar position. So this type of play is also very interesting. You can consider this as black. And it's often why, you know, some people, they avoid this move order. Normally they don't put their bishop on f4 so early. Normally they want, it, they want to prefer uh, in this position, the main move, which we'll look at that prevents knight to e4. Okay, but we go on. So this is Ivanchuk versus Geary. And in that game, knight to a6. All right. All right, rook to e1. Yeah, you put your rook there, you play e4. Very good. All right, bishop to g4. And as in some other variations, often we put our bishop there, and then we take the knight. So after h3, which is the normal move, most people take the knight, but that, that's not what happened to this game. The bishop went back. But most people take there because they weren't bluffing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as Mike Cummer would say, yeah, I wasn't bluffing. I really wanted to take your knight. So the, the main line in this variation actually goes, you take, you go back, which is also an interesting move. Uh, if he didn't have this, it would be a lot harder to play the black position. You know, do you, do you want that pawn? Most people don't. If you, if you do take it, black has a, a really good move here. Queen to b6, attacking the bishop, attacking the b pawn. So after you go back, and this is a playable variation, white is gonna give up an exchange. So here I'm just attacking your knight, and when it moves, I am just winning an exchange here. And this position is playable. I mean, there's so many lines where both sides can give up exchanges in this variation and maintain equality. So I mean, white would have the two bishops and a decent game. But more common in such a position is e4. Um, and you know, just, you know, I didn't want to win your pawn and the knight can go to e5 and black can try to get some queenside play as per usual. Um, our audience almost got a lot higher rated, almost. Uh, but in the game, he was bluffing. He went to f5, it was all a joke. And now after this move, again, black played a type of move that you want to look for in these, these sorts of positions. You know, obviously you're attacking my b-pawn, I can play rook b8, defend my pawn. But a typical sacrifice, we've seen it a few times now, b5. Okay, and so I basically has to accept. And the point was rook to b8. And even at the cost of a pawn, I start to get some initiative on the queen side, which is exactly where I want to play. So when the queen got out of the pin, Attacks the knight on a6. Black one here. Queen d7. And you can easily take on a6. That should, you know, be roughly equal. He went back. Okay, you trade queens with me. And after you trade, now I'm protecting my b pawn. I'm up a pawn. Hooray. 
But now you get this guy. And it's going to get really complicated, and a mistake is about to be made <laughs> in, a, in a few more moves. So black takes here. This is correct. Uh, you were attacking my rook. I moved my rook. And now a mistake. Though playing the right move here is really hard. It's really hard. In the game he took here, which is already losing, though it looks like the most natural move you could possibly play. Uh, and this is one that is, is really tough, so <laughs> I, mean, I will give you a chance to pause your videos at home, but I think I'll, I'll give it away. The saving move that white has in this position is, is not rook d1, e4. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, e4 followed by you know all sorts of complicated trading. So after some trades, you know, in, in in some fashion, no matter how you take stuff, we should end up trading all sorts of stuff. And you know, again, I, I can take here. We can just keep trading. We can just keep trading. Draw. So yeah, e4 was the move you had to find. Not easy to find with any amount of time on your your clock. So congrats if you found that at home. But bishop to c5. Uh, which is actually a huge blunder. So this is a move you guys, a tactic you guys might be able to solve. Uh, so at home you might want to pause your video. In the classroom I'll give the audience a chance. What is the winning move here for black? Yeah. This is the guy we want to attack because we're trying to take this, but we need to get rid of the knight first. So it is it's definitely the right idea. Bishop c2. Bishop c2. Not quite correct. Because uh, here, I, I did have a look at this. You can play here. And even if you give up the exchange, the computer actually says it's, it's dead equal. Um, and <laughs> we were discussing before the class started positions where you're down in exchange and it's equal. Uh, so I know what side Darian would want to be on. He would like to have the exchange. Whereas if, it, and I, we were talking about this, and if a position is like dead equal, and I'd like to be down in exchange. Because normally that means it's a lot easier to play your position and you have a lot more practical chances. Um, so I mean, I don't really mind being either color here. I like white. I got two on one on the queen side. Look at all how many bishops I have. I don't know, I don't mind being white here. You wanna take the bishop? Oh. And then we'll, we'll turn on this weak computer. Oh, Fritz actually likes black. Yeah, yeah Fritz, Fritz likes black in this position. All right, take. Okay, so this actually is, is, is decent for black. Um, but after this, an even cleaner way to win is putting attacking the knight from the other square, going to d7. Uh, okay, and now it's already lost and the game ended. <laughs> uh, he, he took this and he took this and he, he played like a few more moves and they traded stuff and then he resigned. Which is a bit strange, but you know, you're down a piece, so <laughs> you give up. Now, if this was a kid's camp, like they would still resign and it'd be like, why would you resign? But okay, you're playing <laughs> at the top level, I guess you can resign here. Yeah, it's three pawns for a play. Yeah, so I'd, I'd expect even at this level, and it's still a rapid game. There's a lot of time to change things around, but let's see what for Fritz's evaluation. We use Fritz for some reason. It's it's almost minus two. One last game, and we'll go over the main, 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 super theoretical Fianchetto variation with lots and lots of theory. Again, in a rapid game. So this is the game between Krishnan, Sasha Kiran, and Vishwanathan Anand. Again, it was a, a rapid game. And here we get back to our position. Again, the Catalan. And I noticed too, I would play the Catalan for a long time as white. And I think people would play this move order a lot. Like they weren't gonna play the Benoni, but when you play the Catalan, they like to go into it, thinking they've you know sort of tricked you into an inferior version of the Benoni. But I'm like, all right, that's what I was gonna play anyway. So <laughs> it never bothered me. But okay, we get back to our, our main position here. We'd still have to castle. Uh, in this game, a6. Okay, so we're going to transpose to a line where you play rook e8. a4, automatic, rook e8. And we're going to look at the main move, which is knight to d2, which again prevents black from playing knight to e4 himself. 
And this is the main, main line for the Fianchetto variation. OK, we develop our knight to the normal square. And it, if you go to c4 right away, which is like, OK, I guess, um, what will happen is black intended to play knight to e5. Uh, so this didn't happen in the game. We'll go back to the, the main line. Uh, so we return to this variation. And here white makes sort of a useful waiting move. So we kind of looked at, at knight, to, knight to c4, knight to e5, which is perfectly fine for black. But here, the move h3, you're just playing a little waiting game. So you, know, you don't have time to go here, because I just play f4 and kick you back. So black has to play some useful waiting move, rook b8. You know, this is the most useful move you can make. So after the knight goes here, again, we challenge the knight. And we don't want to trade, so we go back to a3. And it looks, you know, sort of terrifying, maybe, or your knight's going to get stuck. You know, he's just going to play f4, kick you around. But you have this move that we, similar to the other line, with knight to h5. And the idea is, if you play f4, and this is, is the game now, but f4 was not played. Uh, eek. See, they open the door for one second, and like bugs are in here. It's, it's like, it's, it's terrible out there. Both doors are open. Okay, but you can play this way, you know, sacrificing a piece. You get two pawns. But your attack here is actually quite strong. Now, the main move that's been played, at least by humans, knight to c4. White could probably improve a bit on theory here. You can actually play this move. What's the point of this? Why are we, why are we doing this? Well, here, you have a fantastic tactic. Ooh, the audience perked up. Like, ooh, fantastic tactic. Yeah, that's what they're here to see. So, you know, I was just saying, all right, I was just going to take your bishop, so you get rid of it. And now you have a, a little tactic here, so you can pause at home. All right, so congrats to anybody that found the move. Bishop takes h3. And we do have this idea looming in the position. So if they take, you can play here. And you actually have too many threats. You're threatening to take the bishop. You're threatening to take here, which forces you to give up your queen or get checkmated. So this actually is, is already winning for black, uh, which is OK. I mean, so again, yeah, congrats if you found that, because it's not easy at all to find. But these are, are the sorts of tactics that you're sort of looking for when you play this variation. And this is the, the saving tactic that in this position prevents white from playing the move f4. And we're playing a little bit dangerous with, with some of our knights as black. You know, we're living on the edge. We have to know some theory because we're counting on all sorts of little knight tricks to uh, survive the opening here. e4, this is the game now. The main move, very good. Black goes here. Again, if f4, we can take on g3. And we're getting ready to play b5. So a very interesting move is possible here for white. And it was played in the game, and this is the main line. a5 offering a you know, pawn to get your queen out of the way to prevent certain tricks. And we'll look at this. So this has happened in the game, and then g4 and f4. And so we'll see what happens and why it's important for the queen to be distracted. If you just play g4 immediately, there's actually a couple different moves here. Queen h4 is a very interesting sacrifice. You can just give up a queen, and you're, you still have a decent position. But more common is b5. All right, if you take my knight, I play b4, and I fork your knights. So they take, and they take again. And even in such a position, it's actually black that is better. So. OK, you know, I have, I have these ideas. I might play here. I might play here. And white has a whole bunch of weaknesses. So you have nothing to complain about here as black. And I, I don't know, both of your minor pieces are probably better than white's. So this actually would be good for black. But we'll see a difference. So in the game, a5 was played. And now the queen is going to be lured to the queen side. And the critical test, I mean, is, is accepting the gambit. And you'll notice now that, for
for a while. You're not going to be threatening this because I, well, on some lines when I get my bishop out, um, we'll, we'll look at him when we get there. You'll be able to take with the knight, so black has to be careful. But here he comes. Okay, we have to retreat here, and you're stuck. The knight is, is just trapped out there, so you have to sacrifice. Uh, and this was this was the point. So takes takes three pawns for a piece. And the main move here, f5, breaking the connection of the bishop, threatening to take the knight. And Danny and I can discuss for hours what the best move is here, because that's what that's what we talked about in, in preparation for this lecture. Because there's two moves, and they both make a lot of sense. The most popular, and it's you know move 20, we're still in theory, uh, is the move h5, which was played by Anand, but also knight to e5, and I, I think this is also pretty good for black. I think I prefer black in most of these positions. And just to give you a sample line, f6. What do you, do you want to play? This is the four when the knight was back. In this position? Yeah. This would be four check. You can, and this actually is a this is the third most common move. So this move is okay too. Uh, and I think that's what like the computer wants to do, but no humans do it, even those that are obviously prepared, like an end. So no, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this move. It's a move. There's a lot of moves uh, in this position. It's move twenty. There's still like lots of theory you got to know. Uh, so yeah, that is that is playable. But ninety five. And to, get, just to give you an example, and also what's funny is like the computer always plays different than the humans would in, in this position, because there's sort of long term things going on now. Like every human always goes back to h8 and like all of these positions, but you know the computer I guess doesn't see that the long term weakness of f6 means you won't be trapped forever. So the computer always wants to go here, but you know that's not what anybody does. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, the computer also like wants to do stuff that is not truly correct, because even though we're in move 20, people spend lots and lots of hours. So I guess in such positions, I'd always trust what you know the world champion with maximum preparation is choosing over <laughs> what the computer said, especially when the evaluation is so minimal. But to give you an example of what the main line after knight to e5 is, you get a position like this where he tries to hold on to f6. And even though you have three pawns for a piece, you know one of them is trapped on h8. You know how are you? What are you going to do about that? And you know we can go back, and we get you know some position like this, and it'll be sort of similar to the game. But in the main line here, h5. I just want to keep my knight there. Seems like a good square for a knight. Move bishop g5. So you couldn't play h6 because I kept my knight there. So now you're going to play h6. Or sorry, f6. Um, here, now that you know, there are some ideas that, OK, now we can't play here, you'll notice, because the rook would embarrass our queen. So queen b4 just gets out of any possible threats. And maybe I'll take on b2. Maybe I'll come back into the game a different way. And you'll see what, what the queen ends up doing. It's kind of interesting. So f6. And he was a human, so he went back to h8. Will he be able to win that pawn, or is the bishop trapped for the rest of the game? That's, that's a big question in the middle game. OK, and now we've seen before this idea where the bishop goes here in a lot of lines, check. He does something similar, only this time it's a queen. So that's, that's interesting. So he was keeping the d4 square available for his queen. Jack, I'm you know I'm gonna trade queens and then I can win on f6. So you take, I take. You go back and yeah, you might go get my pawn. Now another you know sort of dynamic move. Well, here I actually can just win a tempo on the bishop. And here, this is move, going into move 26 here. Weiss is about to play his 26 move. A theoretical novelty. So obviously, you know, very, very theoretical, this opening. Uh, his, his move was bishop to h4, which hadn't been played before and hasn't been played since because it's not a very good move. The main move is bishop to f4. And you get an equal position after taking this, taking this. 
you know, going bad, you don't want to lose your stuff. Uh, and this should be equal. If you ever put anything on E5, you know, we can trade lots of stuff and it should be equal. Uh, which is why that's the main line. But, okay, I mean, how do you prove that this is such a bad move? Well, weakness of the last move, the bishop no longer is on this diagonal. Bloop. So here goes the knight. All right, is he going to move his rook? Nope, I just take this. And an interesting decision, I guess. What would you guys in the audience play? I know we're running a little bit low on time, but... Take the bishop with the knight. Yeah, he took the bishop, which is, which is excellent. Yeah, taking you know, the exchange is not as valuable because you're probably going to have to end up giving it back. So he ends up taking the bishop, and the idea is now you win the e-pawn. And you, know, you fork him, so he only has one move. So he saved both of his pieces with knight to f3. Um, but now this, this next move, which is excellent, is the reason why you shouldn't play, put your bishop on, on h4. It's not obvious to see how black can really exploit this. But bishop f5. And we're low on time, so I'll just explain the idea. The idea is we go here, check, and we put the bishop on e4. And we're threatening to take the knight and win the bishop. And if the bishop moves anywhere off this diagonal, like say g3, because when I checked you, your king probably went to f2, you, you know. Uh, well, then you're, you're get, dropping this guy. So that's the idea. Now here, which is another mistake, but it's, it's not easy to see. Like the only move the computer says like keeps you alive. The computer really wanted you to go here with the idea of attacking the rook and then going here. But it's funny, he went here because he wanted to go there in one move. Yeah, you gotta get there in like three, four moves. You know, that, uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna check you along the way. That's another move you gotta waste. And now, what's funny is he used all of his pieces, which is wrong. That, that showed him. You actually do just get a phenomenal position if you check right away, go through with the idea without bringing, I mean, obviously you want another rook on the e-file, it seems, seems good. Um, so we'll go over why it's a mistake. And now, yeah, if you go here, I guess, I can go here, and I, I, I know I do lose this. So, but black is you know, still a little bit better here. Even though, I mean, I like black a lot. Peter's not as impressed. But in the game, he went here, and white, you know, all right, just go attack the pawn. Here, and we'll see one difference. So in this line, now bishop e4, which was not played, is not as good, because you can take this. And if here, you take this. And okay, and you can go here. And it's sort of funny that the knight is protecting this pawn. It's kind of funny. So he played the better move. And now, sort of a surprising move. He went here, attacking the rook. But this is wrong. He took. We won't go over. <laughs> we'll go. Let's see. Let's see if the main line is actually interesting. Uh, he should just play here. Um, knight e three. He took. But now black wins some material. <clears throat> okay, so he attacks the pawn. Check. All right. Looks kind of dangerous. G5, exactly. So after here, he went here. I mean, black's up a lot of pawns. <laughs> so it didn't last much longer here. And then he resigned on his move. Uh, I guess he assumed the rook would move. Uh, I assume he takes on D5. So down a thousand pawns, <laughs> he decided to throw in the towel. So again, you know, another example of how theoretical this opening can get. Uh, but I hope that doesn't really deter people from playing it. This does do it for the Benoni. Uh, you know, until next week when I'm like, eh, part four. We got more stuff to cover. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, until next week, I hope you guys, you know, hit like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends, put it on the internet, Facebook, YouTube, however, however it works. I don't know how it works. Mm -hmm.